Eurovision got cancelled in 2020, so this year the EBU has set up four different scenarios to make sure it can go ahead despite any kind of COVID restrictions. It will be hosted in Ahoy Arena in Rotterdam, the Netherlands in May and it's still up to debate whether the singers and the audience should be present or stay at home. In this video I will lay out all the different scenarios and pick the most realistic one. Let's see the four scenarios the EBU is thinking of. Plan A. This is a normal contest that's organized in a way it always has been. A packed arena, live on stage performances, live audience and hosts on stage keeping the show together. Everything being broadcasted from Ahoy. Plan B lays out a contest with social distancing. It's practically the same as plan A, but the audience wouldn't be up close to each other, as you can see here. No more kiss cams, I guess. I'm gonna get back to plan C in a second, but let's take plan D. In case the Netherlands ends up in a lockdown, plan D comes into effect. No live audience and participants would be allowed in the arena. The participants would perform from a local studio in their home country but the show would still be put together in Ahoy with the hosts on stage. And now let's dissect Plan C. In this scenario, the contest would be socially distanced and would be broadcasted from Ahoy Arena with live on stage performances. However, if there are any delegations that cannot travel to the Netherlands because either the Netherlands or their own country bands travel, they would perform remotely from a local studio in their own country, just like with Plan D. This plan makes the most sense, and I'm gonna tell you why. European countries have been imposing different Covid restrictions since March 2020, and a lot of these restrictions haven't been lifted at all. On this map I highlighted the countries that might be in trouble come May. As you can see, all of these countries belong to the Big Five, so we may face a contest without them actually being present. What I'm most certain of is that the United Kingdom will face the toughest restrictions, as it already has. As of the 20th of January in Europe, the UK has the most rapidly evolving cases, with the most deaths, and the numbers just keep creeping up. They've been in a national lockdown for more than a month now. This is the third lockdown to be exact, and they're facing quite a few more months before it can be eased. And even if it's eased, to be fair, the tier system will return and travel regulations will still be in effect. As of now, I'd say the UK delegation is in the hardest position, and not just because of the British regulations, but also because of the fact that with Brexit, different roles apply to the UK now. The EU countries can easily ban entrance. Another possible absentee could be Italy. Italy is a close second when it comes to the death tolls, but shockingly they haven't decided to close their borders. Travel to the Netherlands is still possible. In France and Spain there's a curfew at the moment and travel even between regions is prohibited. In Germany they're talking about extending lockdown until the summer. Ouch! As for the host country, the Netherlands is introducing curfew as I'm speaking. When it comes to the international travel, they state on their government website you are strongly advised not to travel to the Netherlands unless it is strictly necessary. Interestingly enough, the only Eurovision country they deem safe is Australia. With the vaccine rollout, there's a strong possibility that herd immunity can be reached by May and we can travel freely, but the EBU is making a final decision, so they say, next month so they must take everything into account that has happened so far, especially in January. And right now, half of Europe is either under a lockdown situation or has curfew in place. It would be insane to choose plan A under these conditions, and everyone who still thinks it's a possibility has highly questionable intelligence. 
It would be premature and irresponsible to choose Plan B as well, and even if an improved COVID situation made Plan B possible in May, the EBU just has to stay prepared for the worst. I mean, Eurovision has been cancelled before, for God's sake. In a word of who knows what's gonna happen tomorrow, remote performances must remain an option just to be safe. Plan C is the only scenario that makes sense business-wise as well. I'm confident that most countries will be able to travel to Eurovision, but to assure that every country is able to compete, Plan C is the obvious solution. What are your thoughts? Comment and let's talk about it.